Right, so in the last couple of days, Mark Cavendish has managed to win three stages in the Tour of Turkey. And obviously, everyone on everyone's mind is, will Cavendish win a stage in the Tour? Now, it's a very interesting question for multiple reasons, because he's so close to being the all-time Tour de France record holder uh, of number stage. I think he is 30, and he's like, and um, old Eddie Merck says 34. So he's four off. So he's pretty close. And, you know, back in the day, Cav used to rack up, what, four or five wins in a tour season, like, you know, 2008, 2009, you know, those sort of days. So you think about it, and you're like, yeah, he probably could do it. But, like, if you just thought he was going to win every stage. But I think there's there's two things we've got to consider. So you've got to th- consider, like, this year. Like, is he just going to win one stage? Now, I think, for me personally, like... Him winning stages in sprints is really impressive. I'm not going to lie. You know, I did a video about him when he came second in Bartley and said, you know, is he back, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, the first major result was that he got second in Jean, uh, GP Jean-Pierre Monser, which uh, what he was behind, um, not Phillips and the other lad, Merlier. Merlier, the Alperson lad, Merlier. And he finished second there. He'd been never in the bunch sprint, but Merlier sort of went before, like, you know, before the corner had a, had a gap. And everyone was like, okay, you know, that's a pretty good result. We hadn't seen anything really like that close to Cav. I think he got like a top 10 in Tour of Poland last year, maybe. But nothing, you know, that would indicate to me or anyone else that he was really going to, you know, start winning stages again. And Cobb Bartley came, finished second and everyone's like, okay, okay. And then in the Tour of Turkey on the first stage, he was like really out of position. Hodge like messed up the corner just before. And then they sort of like almost hit the barrier and then he sprinted, but the two lads ahead of him, uh, you know, obviously got the win uh, decline and Halverson, Pierre Barbier, but Cav came pretty quickly. And everyone was like, oh, you know, it might happen. And then obviously stage two happened and he won that quite convincingly, really. I mean, Jasper Phillips and, and Greipel, but yeah, he, he did bin them quite easily, to be honest. It, it just did happen. And to be fair, it was the same with stage three as well. He'd been those two quite convincingly as well. I'd say that was probably one of the most convincing wins. Um, and then stage three, he again bin Philipson and Stanislav Anilovsky again. And you're like, okay, so he's won three in a row, which I think is the first time he's won three in a row since like Qatar in 2014 or something. But I think that's slightly irrelevant. Like, actually, no, no, no. Let me, let me caveat that. It's not irrelevant. I think it shows that he's got good like physical condition, like not sprinting, but just good condition that he can get through stage after stage. Okay, I've seen some of the power days here. It's like 230 normalized. So like, you know, anyone can get around that realistically. And I don't want to be disrespectful to pro cyclists, but like a flat stage in the Tour of Turkey down a motorway is just not very hard objectively. Like anyone can get around that. Um, but obviously the last bit is quite hard. But it, it does show that, you know, he can do back-to-back sprints now and his, his condition is decent, uh, which which is good to show. But I just say the main thing you have to think about is shell decrease. haven't mentioned that. And I think that was probably you know, a really good result. And it showed a good trend, uh, progression from him. The year before, he, you know, he went in the break, he was like so far off the pace. And then this year, he was third. Okay, they messed up the sprint with, with Quick Step. I think, you know, maybe he could have won that sprint. I think he could have done if Quick Step went for him and Bennett obviously could have won it if Bennett went for him. But I think the most telling point of the whole year was when Cav was in the slipstream, Bennett, and he couldn't get around him. And I think that shows you that he, he can't win a stage in the tour because he just isn't, it's like he was literally in his draft and he couldn't get close to coming around. He just lost ground in someone's draft. And if you think about it, like if you go out on your Sunday club ride at 30K an hour, think how much draft you get. Imagine doubling that at 60, 60 to 70K an hour in a sprint. Think how much draft you get. So if you can't like at least stay on that wheel, that means you're a lot weaker. And okay, show the priest is like a hard-ish race, but still, I think... For me personally, that shows that he's not in the top, top condition. Okay, he can win pro races or what they used to be, all category HC races. But I think the step up to world tour and like level is one above. Like, could he win a sprint in Torino? I don't think so. I think Ewan's fast. I think Bennett's fast. I think probably Viviani's faster now. He looks like he's, you know, won Chalet, um, Chalet Père de la Loire. Uh, recently, which is obviously, you know, a decent race. He'd been some all right people. Um, I'm probably missing some other... Wow, Van Aert's probably quicker than him. I mean, like, I just I just can't see it. I think the only time I could see him winning maybe a World Tour race is if he goes to, like, UAE Tour and a couple others. Or, like, you know, he goes to a real easy stage. There's not, it's not too hard. And not many of the other big sprinters are there and he gets a perfect lead out. But me personally, I think Cavendish will not go to the Tour de France. I... 
unless it's commercial reasons. It doesn't make a lot of sense sporting room to go. He, he can't help an, enough, in my opinion, Sam Bennett, in order to win. He's not going to be that last lead-out man, I don't think, because you wouldn't get a draft off him. So I think he's not going to go to the tour. I don't think he's going to win a tour stage. I know that's very disappointing for a lot of people, but I think it's just the truth. I don't I don't really see how he's going to do it um, anytime soon. Could he win a world tour race? I think he could. I think he could win a world tour stage race this year. Uh, not a stage race, but just a stage in a world tour race this year, for sure. Maybe like, you know, a, one of those dodgy little classics that they have, like the Belgian site, like Brussels classic. I think mean, that might be world tour, might not, might only be pro. But anyway, like the race like that, I could just imagine him bidding a fair few people. Like Philipson is quick, like, there's no denying that, but he's just not like a top, top sprinter. And although actually, if we look at it, Philipson, you know, won a stage in in Welter last year, I believe. Um, He's also won a stage in Tour Down Under. Uh, he's won Bink Bank Tour stages. He's won second in uh, Ruga de Pana this year, actually. So, you know, like, he, he's not bad. Like, you know, he won sh he won Shelter Praise, uh, which we spoke about before. But in Bruce de Pana, like, okay, he lost to Bennett, but he did bin Ackerman, Nizzolo, Dupont, Hofstetter, Bowl, Viviani, Morkov, and Annie Goleski again. So, like, Cav, on the look of that, could probably win that race. Which, you know, that'd be pretty big. So maybe I'm being too harsh on Cal. I think he will win a World Tour stage. I just think the Tour is just a ridiculous level. I just don't think he's that. Because at the Tour, it's like the peak of the peak of the peak. And I don't think he's there yet. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Obviously, let me know what you think down below. Will Cav, number one, go to the Tour? I don't think so. And if he does go to the Tour, will he win a stage? And I guess, finally, if he goes to the Tour this year, will he whack up four victories to, win, to, come, to come level with Eddie Merckx? Because that would be outrageous. Um, but anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. We're going to have more coming. Hopefully, we're going to have Pickcock's Power Data from uh, the Provence of Pale uh, coming out in a couple of days if he actually posts it. Uh, but if not, uh, we'll have some other top quality videos. Uh, so make sure to like and subscribe and all the rest of it. And we'll see you.